welcome back to Watch The Time. Thank you for tuning back in. I'm really pleased to be able to bring you a video of a watch I wanted to feature for quite some time. It's taken me a little while to get it in and I think I've chose just the right moment to bring it in. So this is gonna be the watch that I'm entering for the 100 pound challenge. Troy over at the Bald Watch Collector had a great idea. He asked a few of us, a few of us watch reviewers that have got YouTube channels will be interested in participating. Um, I'm not I'm not saying I'm going to win, but this is one that I've wanted to get in. I just thought the stars aligned. I'm going to bring it in. This watch was worn by Tom Cruise. I know I'll wear it better. Stop it. You don't need to keep saying things like that. Oh, okay, but keep, keep talking. But no, all joking aside, um, it was like I said, it was one that I wanted to get in for a while. Um, and here it is. I feel like this is going to be the perfect time to bring it to the channel. Like I said, this watch has been around a long time. Um, but this watch came in quite a bit under the £100 I was allowed. This came in at £44. £44 for a Casio that's built like a G-Shock, that looks really nice, has the history, but does it does it hit the mark? Um, I suppose we'll find out in just a moment. Please, I will leave a link to Troy's channel. I will also leave a link to the other channels participating. Please show them some love. Also check out their video. I think there's gonna be voting taking place. I think the, this is in around the 6th of March. This is all happening. So please do check out the videos. Be as honest as you like, but be nice. Um, so have I done Mission Impossible? Or have has it has it faltered to deceive? I guess there's no time like the present to find out. So thank you for tuning back in. I'll stop going on. But let's get the camera turned around and get on with it. Hi guys and girls, so this is the watch. Um, very generic packaging you get with Casio. Just cardboard um, inside, you've got that watch. Um, yeah, instruction manual underneath there, not a lot to really read. Uh, well, well, there's a lot to read, but not that you'd need to, if that makes sense. Um, I never do, they're pretty, pretty straightforward. If you've owned one or two Casios, you're normally pretty good at setting them up. Pretty intuitive in terms of how you do it. And also there are buttons on the each, there's four buttons and all have sort of writing to tell you, let you know what they do really. So that being said, I can't see it being much of a, of a problem to be honest. So yeah, as I said in the intro, this is worn by Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. And yeah, I think it's a cool looking piece. One I wanted to get in for a while and I thought, I thought what better time to do it than this challenge so there we are the model number for this is the eaw dw 291 v i think people mainly will know it as the dw 290 um generally but yeah this is the watch uh inside it's running the digital quartz movement uh, i'm not i didn't open the back didn't didn't wish to do that um it says it's got 200 meters it's quite easy to unscrew Did, i didn't see the need to be yeah, a digital quartz movement uh, the battery on a lot of quartz, uh, quartz, excuse me, Casio watches tends to last for ten years. This doesn't cite ten years, so probably a couple, a couple years up to five years, possibly um, battery life, and then you can just unscrew it, change the battery, screw it back up. So that's the movement. The construction of the watch, aside from the case back pushers and crystal, is all resin. Really, it's like a plasticky resin that you tend to get with uh, Casio watches. Very durable. You'll already see a little love mark. They're sort of bashed against the wall. Um, the watches are to be worn, aren't they? Let's be honest. So I'm not going to be too precious. So I really wanted to spend some time hands-on with this watch. And that's what I've done. So yeah, resin uh, with plastic elements. But we're sort of, So yeah, resin. The pushers are stainless steel, as is the case back. Plastic, pin buckle clasp. And uh, crystal we'll talk about in a moment. The case thickness of this watch is 14.1 millimeters. The case diameter. So I measure without the pushers. It was coming at a 46.4, and including the pushers, it was coming at a 50.4. So not a small watch. The lug width on this is 19 millimeters inside there. It does flare out a little bit, but it is 19 at this point there. And the lug-to-lug, -lug, tip to tip, is 50.2. So basically, as yes, it's basically a square watch in terms of the lug-to-lug -lug and the diameter of the watch. Uh, but given the way it looks, it's probably not hardly surprising those proportions. The case back. I'll let you have a quick look at it and you'd have seen it in my macro shots as well. That's what it looks like. And as I said, DW290 um, on the back. All the other information that we'll run through now as well. 
the bezel is sort of fixed sort of protruding part of the case really um, yeah nothing to to really write home about on that but um, yeah so that's that the pushers as I say you got one to sort of in sort of set set inside the case and three others that are not uh, the reason they've done that is because that's the button you can press to adjust and I suppose it's quite easy to knock otherwise so that's probably why they've given it a bit of a guard and it's put of recessed in if you like the as, as I said the strap is resin uh, pin buckle class none of it's signed um, but you know what you're getting with that the crystal I can neither confirm nor deny whether it's a acrylic or mineral if I had to if I had to put a five R down and I was betting I'd say it's probably acrylic but um, I'm not sure either way at this point the water resistance is cited as being 200 meters as you saw on there and on the back as well so that give you 20 atmospheres of water resistance and a weight will appear in the top right it's just about 56 grams but given the construction given the, the resin there's only a few elements that are stainless steel that's not probably a huge surprise but let's have a look at the dial now guys in a bit more detail not as much to look at as you'd get on some watches in terms of looking at the high finishing and the dial and bezel and stuff but this is still very nice i do like you've got electroluminescence illuminator water resist 200m very very nice sort of blue color i really do like that if you if anyone anyone watches formula one you'll know that's the sort of color of mercedes patronus and that's my team so i do like that inside there you've got obviously you've got the digital analog display it says casio analog excuse me it's casio alarm chronograph uh, top left if you hold it down you can adjust what you want to go for i've already spent ages doing that so i won't spend too long on that but that's if you press that you can scroll through setting the time and stuff pretty straightforward uh, bottom left is mode so you can go through alarm you can go to timer stopwatch and back to the time no split time no no different time zone on this uh, obviously when you click the top right you that, that'll start the alarm excuse me the alarm that'll stop the, the stopwatch and timer the the functionality on this isn't is not is not as good as some but I do like what they're doing it's got enough on there for a digital watch bottom right you press and I bring that up now it brings up the electroluminescence and if you've had a watch with this before you'll know the electroluminescence is no joke it's sort of Casio's version of the Indiglo that you get with Timex shines bright no problems there whatsoever doing the business I'm really really I really like that to be honest um, as I say not not as much to write home about of this one in terms of functionality that you'd get with different time zones and stuff but as I say you've got enough on there alarm timer stopwatch and you've got the time obviously top left tells you it's Wednesday uh, you've got the month and then day because that's kind of how they do it on uh, the other side of the pond we'd normally do it we'd have it the other way around Wednesday the 20th uh, Wednesday the 22nd uh, of, Mo of February so yeah but there you go still you know what the time and date is and I always do like to have 24 hour clock on mine that's just a personal preference but that's the dial guys that's the pushers that's everything that's going on there let me pop it on the wrist quickly give you an idea of what it looks like on my wrist my wrist is just above a seven inch wrist for your reference and just give me one moment so there's four holes to make it smaller and several to make it bigger so you're going to fit many many wrist sizes and that's what it looks like on me uh, as you could tell from the dimensions i gave you a moment ago not a small watch uh, never claimed it to be but i do think it looks really cool the colorways with the sort of ready orange go around the outer part of the digital display uh, along with the sort of bluey green i think it looks fantastic really really nice but let me just give it a quick wipe guys because believe it or not it does get a little bit dusty as i'm recording and then we can crack on with the things that i think the pants and pucker about the watch if you've ever watched before you'll know at this point i'll start with pants i like to go on a high with pucker so what i think is pants it was obviously it's not going to surprise anyone there's not an awful lot to be honest given this is a watch that i've been sort of looking at for quite some time it's not just an impulse thing there was a reason um i brought this in obviously for the challenge but just generally but yeah the only thing i would say really is the size i think it wears well on the wrist for the size but it's a bit bigger than it needs to be two or three mil smaller would have been nice but for me um yeah that's not too bad and the functionality you get a lot more functionality with a lot of other casios 
this is a little bit more limited in different terms of the second time and stuff um but yeah they're the two things i mentioned i'd go with the size and the sort of lack of functionality you'd get on most casios what i'd say is paka is the backlight you'd have seen already the electroluminescence is is fantastic the legibility i do like the legibility on this i've not had a, any problems being able to tell the time on it which is fantastic sometimes can be the case with some watches but fortunately with this one it hasn't been so that's really really good the general look i think the general look on this watch is fantastic look in the business uh, very very nice the history and when i say the history what i kind of lean upon is the fact that this was worn in such a prestigious film as mission impossible at the time it was massive in the 90s um, and early thousands. I know people love that film. So, um, yeah, the fact that Tom Cruise wore this watch is fantastic. And when you could pick it up for sort of £40, yeah, what's not to like? And then, yeah, the price. The price is fantastic. Like I said, the, the people have bought it for a lot cheaper than me. I got this for £44. And I think it represents great value for money. And Casio really are the kings for value for money, money the, what you get for your money. So, yeah. Good guys and girls, so let me just surmise what I think is pucker is I go with the backlight, legibility, general look, history and price are what I think is pucker and would I recommend the watch? Of course I would. I think it's a, it's a really cool looking piece. It's going to be durable, 200 meters. There's not much you're not going to be able to do with it. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a real fantastic piece. But guys and girls, please let me know what you think about this watch and uh, maybe any other watches you may want to see on the channel. And as always say, don't forget to like, subscribe, and always watch the time. Take care, guys. All the very best. <laughs>